Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here with lifeonfire.com and uh, in this episode, we are actually busting in to Catherine Humphs' house and she's the owner of Savory Made Simple and uh, she has such an epic story because she went from taking her experience, her knowledge, her passion for, for cooking and she built out a business incredibly fast from July 9th and then in less than 30 days, she got the thing out, five figure business and all this stuff happened super fast and it's a really cool business. It's This is gonna be an inspirational episode, lots of nuggets to share with you. So why don't you follow me and we will bust in on Savory Made Simple. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here and I'm a kick business coach and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. All right, so you ready? Let's do it. Hey! How's it going? What's going on? Welcome, welcome. Did you know we were coming? I had a feeling had that a something idea. was going on. Yeah. So cool. So, um, so tell us a little bit about the digs here. Okay. So this is my childhood home. Okay. And um, I don't live here anymore, but it's a pretty big space. So mm -hmm. when I was starting Savory Made Simple, I pretty much just took over any extra room I could. Yeah. So this is my parents' house and any hopes for them having like a guest room are out because Savory yeah. Made Simple came in. You've taken over. And taken it over. So I'll show you my warehouse. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's cool. It. We're gonna make a right turn down the hallway. Here is the glorious warehouse Dang. room. I've got extra packaging supplies, um, plates for photos, bottles for sauces. I've got a vacuum sealer over here. Plenty of cardboard boxes. Is this a snack? <laughs> <laughs> that is for <laughs> photos. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is where it began. So, so you got a little warehouse space little here. Warehouse got, space. What do we have over here? What's yeah? What's so going these on? are some uh, extra products and food products. So single portion of rice for when you need to make your risotto. Okay. Cashews. We've got it all. I've got some balsamic vinegar for salad dressing. Nice. We've got it all pre-portioned. And uh, I can show you my extra food storage. All right, let's do that. Okay, we're gonna go out this way. The humble beginnings, the humble beginnings. of a huge company. <laughs> the bird. The bird. The bird. The bird doesn't come with savory no. simple. No, So extra spices and chicken stock, flour, sugar. Um, I've got an extra freezer full of me. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about about just so what happens. You've got the monster spice rack. You've got all the ingredients in the other room. And yeah. so just just a quick overview of just what what is all what this about? What happens? Sure. Yeah. So every week um, I design a menu. There's mm -hmm. nine different recipes that are possible to choose from. And so I basically have to go around, shop around, and pick out all of the ingredients for nine recipes every week pre-package them, pre-measure them, so that all you have to do is throw it in a pan and act like emerald. And um, then I tie it in a pretty bow in the cardboard box and it arrives on your doorstep. And it's like, you are so happy to get this magical package on and your door. And so I am one of the recipients of the magical package <laughs> and it is amazing. So it's just nice that we don't have to go shopping, we don't have to mm -hmm. do all the legwork to, yeah. to, to get the that. food. Catherine does it. Hey. And, um, and what's crazy is that the amount of money that we would spend, you know, to go find everything. Right. So it's like the money plus the time, whereas you, there's a convenience factor, but then the other thing, which we'll get into in a second, yeah. is the chef factor. <laughs> so, um, so cool. Yeah. So X, lots of fridges, spice rack. Oh yeah, we got it all. All right, well let's check cool. out, see what's next. Okay. So this is kind of the test kitchen because mm -hmm. I create nine recipes every week. And so I have to test it out to okay. make sure that they're going to work and they're, yeah. you know, the right measurement. So every Tuesday I'm cooking for my whole family here because I, I'm not going to eat nine recipes on my own. So I have a big standing invitation on Tuesdays for all, the whole family to come over. I throw them a bunch of food. They sometimes give me feedback, but mm -hmm. most of the time I don't listen to it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is actually the test kitchen right okay. here. Yeah. This is where all the... 
all the ideas come together. Yeah. And so how do you come up with the recipes? Like how does that unfold? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. Um, so I'm, I went to culinary school. I'm a classically trained chef. Um, and so when you are a chef, you kind of have a different brain. It's like a food brain. And so in my mind, I was just explaining this to someone. I basically have like a series of charts in hmm. my in my brain. And it's like, okay, for every plate of food, there needs to be something green and mm. something starchy. So okay. like either a potato or like a pasta, um, there needs to be a protein. Yeah. So even if you're vegetarian, I need to have like some beans in there or something mm -hmm. for you. Um, and so then within those components, then I go into the flavor chart, okay. which is like something sweet, salty, bitter, sour. So then you kind of just, I just fill in the blanks. So oh, wow. if you tell me you really like a ribeye, which mm -hmm. I happen to know that you do. I do. He likes a ribeye. It so, so good. Um, so in order to kind of meet all the requirements, mm -hmm. the protein was the ribeye and then the starch mm -hmm. was the cauliflower. Yep. And then I needed something sweet, so I did a balsamic blackberry reduction. That was so cool. And then we needed something salty, so, so we did bacon wrapped asparagus, mm -hmm. which was also something green. Yeah. So you just kind of fill in the blanks, yeah. and then you have a recipe. That's so cool. So you want to grab a seat? I want to dive yeah, in. I have so it. many questions to ask cool. you. Cool. So. Let's do it. So, all right. So we got a, we got a good flavor. <laughs> I'm going to try to use as many <laughs> cooking like references <laughs> as I can. So we got a good flavor of just of, of what Savory Made Simple does. You know, yeah. the box comes to the house, saves time, saves money, and it's delicious. And you look like a hero okay. in the kitchen. Yeah. So, but I wanted you to back up about the entrepreneurial journey a little bit. Okay. And so I'd like you to, to hear and have you go back to just some of the inspiration for this. So yeah. um, just your background as a chef, you know, maybe some of the online or the reality things that you've done oh, and just yeah. we'll kind of weave, you know, in okay. up to uh, this part of the journey. Totally. So I'll go way back to okay. start. Um, so I never knew. start in this house. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it kind of does. I never knew that I wanted to be a chef. That mm -hmm. was never my plan. Um, but I got a hostess job at the mm -hmm. Prado and Balboa Park and I hated it. I hated interacting with grumpy customers. And so my only motive was to hide from them. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to like quit the job right yeah. away. So um, I asked the chef for a job in the kitchen because I figured then I wouldn't have to deal with these grumpy people. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, totally. So I just fell in love with cooking right away. I was 19 at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I just was like, this is my lifelong passion. So at 19, I applied online for Le Cordon Bleu Culinary School in Paris, France. Got accepted. And is that one of like the top schools? It, it is, yeah, yeah. It's pretty well known. Like Julia Child went there. Okay. Yeah. So it's like the top of the top? I mean, it's pretty, pretty high up there. there. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> so uh, I go to Paris, France at 20 years old, mm -hmm. culinary school. I'm there for a year. I come back, I apply for a bunch of internships. And um, really, it just kind of was me, you know, just putting myself out there and, yeah. and being really fearless. And really, I, I attribute it to being really young and naive and mm -hmm. not having any fear. Oh, so it's almost having, like you didn't know. I didn't know any better. Yeah. Like, I didn't yeah. know that I shouldn't apply for the best restaurants in the world yeah. because I knew nothing. Isn't it crazy how some people would have stopped themselves? Right. Because like, oh, if, you know, if it's the best, I shouldn't, shouldn't yeah. do it. But mm -hmm. I was not, I was just like, well, I might as well. So yeah. I did and I got um, internships at two of them. Okay. So I have this like amazing experience working for the best chefs in the world. Yeah. And, and tell us about one of those or the... Yeah. So um, I was at the French Laundry, which is okay. in Napa, California. It's been rated like the number one restaurant in the world numerous times. Um, Thomas Keller is just arguably the best chef in the world. Like yeah. people, you know, really believe that. And I, I really believe he's one of them. And so, I, you know, my day began at 3.30 a.m. when mm -hmm. I would wake up, I would drive to work. Yeah. And I mean, we worked in the pitch black, you know, before the sun came up, we yeah. were working for four hours before the sun came Same. up and I would get off at 7 p.m. Wow, long, long day. days. Long days. And, and how young were you at that time? I, I mean, was like 22. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, 21. 21. Okay. Yeah. 21. So 21 years old, mm -hmm. I'm working my little tail off. Yeah. I complete the internships and I get back to San Diego and I have a really hard time finding a job. You're like, I've only been in the top, <laughs> you know, culinary yeah. school in the world and yeah. at the number one no restaurant. One wanted me. I applied for a food court at a local college. I won't say which one. I applied for a food court job, like, like to be a Panda yeah. Express chef. And they said that I was underqualified. That's seems Absurd. odd. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's very <laughs> odd. Yeah. I was furious. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I ended up starting my own catering company called Pardon My French mm -hmm. and I did like little dessert buffets and yeah. stuff. 
But then I was like, you know what? Maybe I should get a real, a real job, right? Yeah. So then I jumped back into the restaurant scene. I sign on with the Cone Restaurant Group, mm -hmm. local restaurant group, and I open Bobo Kitchen and Bar in Ocean Which is Beach. Awesome. I like it. The I Brussels sprouts. I still are go amazing. there. Yeah. It's embarrassing. I still go there. <laughs> um, so I opened Bobo in 2010 as the youngest chef in San Diego. Oh wow! Um, especially the youngest female chef in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And um, really, they they helped mold me into the chef that I am now, and I just learned a mm -hmm. ton. I was voted best new chef of San Diego in 2012, best female chef 2012 Dang. by Riviera Magazine. Um, opened two other restaurants with the Cone Restaurant Group, yeah. 100 Wines in Hillcrest and Bobo in Long Beach. So mm -hmm. again, just work, 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 work. And when I was in Long Beach, something hit me where I just thought, I'm working a lot. Yeah. And if I want to work this much, it better be for myself. Wow. And so that was what I knew. Turning point right there. Yeah, yeah. I just remember like just being so exhausted, opening my third restaurant in three years and just being yeah. like, um, something's got to give. So I left the restaurant in January of 2015 mm -hmm. and I started a food blog called Cat's Kitchen Collective. Um, and that was really kind of just my placeholder because I'm yeah. like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know I don't want to be a restaurant chef anymore, yeah. but I still have food. So where is this going to take me? I think what's awesome about that is sometimes people wait mm -hmm. until everything's like perfect to get going. Yeah. And I think it's so cool that you just, it's like you had the placeholder. You just put your energy into the food blog and yeah. we're doing something, which then that unfolded the next step. And it's kind totally. of like sometimes you need to just take the action and then it becomes clear. You Absolutely, know? Yeah. yeah. So in, um, so in the meantime, I had still been in, invited to do all these really cool things. So yeah. I competed on Guy's Grocery Games on the Food Network in um, February of- Guy with um, the spiky hair? Guy with the that spiky guy? hair. Is this, I, how I does his hair look in person? It looks epic. Uh, like it's just, in his contract that he cannot change his hair. No way. Yeah. What about if he loses his hair? Oh man, I don't know. They'll probably, yeah, they'll probably Plugs. fix it right up. That's He's it. actually, like the nicest guy in the world. Yeah. I was He seems really, like he'd be a right to hang yeah, out Yeah, I, I was actually really impressed with like how genuine he was. Yeah. But um, anyway, so I got to run around a grocery store, which was like so fun. And then I ended up winning the show. That's cool. Um, What'd yeah. you get for winning? Like what? $16,000. Did you really? Yeah. Dang. Yeah. That's cool. So I invested that right back. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and so I won. And yeah. I remember just being like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this money, but I'm going to invest it into something that can help my business. Yeah. And that's what I said on, on their little like confessional video. They said, yeah. what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to invest it into my business. Do you business. have that clip somewhere? Yeah. 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 All right. We got to cut that yeah. in. So <laughs> check it out. Winning 16 grand is just huge. I've been been working for years so this is just life-changing and feels like I finally made it what are you gonna do with the money I want to start a cooking school That's amazing. Yes. <laughs> and um, so that was amazing then I got invited to compete against Bobby Flay oh, on the Food Network dang. yeah so in January I flew to New York to compete against Bobby Flay mm -hmm. I made it past the first round and then lost by one vote, vote oh. against Bobby Flay I know who who, who voted against you um, this girl, this lady who owns a duck company, and she's from France. What does she know about what good food? What does she know? What does she I know? totally screwed up, <laughs> yeah. actually. I screwed oh, up right. like raw lamb, but it's <laughs> <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. I was like, eh. <laughs> But um, anyway, so I had all these cool opportunities coming my way, yeah. and so I knew that leaving the restaurant was the right decision for me. I was still getting mm -hmm. a ton of food opportunities, and then um, I was going to take the food blog to the next level by doing live cooking shows yeah. and live cooking webinars. Mm -hmm. And so I saw um, a advertisement for you. You were hosting a webinar speech or something yeah. um, through San Diego Internet Marketers, and I went. And yeah. I was like, this guy is so crazy. I should really, I should really stalk him out a little bit. <laughs> and so I went to Ignite. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, this is it. Like, this is going to take me to the next level. This is how I'm going to invest in my business mm -hmm. right here. Signed up with you. And yep. on July 9th, we met at Paradise Point. Mm -hmm. And I remember you walked in, you're like, magic is made at this table. There's and one I, table yeah. that's just like, it's... It just calls to you. It, it's many of purposes and visions were created. Yeah. There. And so we were sitting there and I had all of these ideas for how mm -hmm. to grow this food blog business. Yep. And basically we were just like, we can do better. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm into doing better. I'm yeah. always into doing better. 
And so I happen to mention that I cook for some Nike sponsored athletes, like on yeah, the side. So, cause, so part of like the VIP day and creating like the vision is yeah. we go through and through the your story and then your stance, like what do you what's the yeah. movement you're starting and so we kinda went through those things, but the going back into the detail of the story is yeah. like, yeah, you know, so I, I you know, I make food for the number one <laughs> CrossFit team in the world and you know, and also like, whoa, whoa, whoa time out. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It was just like, so tell me about that, you know, and when you started to share that, it was like, you know, there's a local company, Pete's Paleo, and they, I mean, I eat that, mm -hmm. I've heard it's, well, I don't, shouldn't say anything about it, but yeah. it's, um, and it's grown like crazy, yeah. and so then it was just like, well, if that's what you do, I would much rather eat your food than and eat. And make it at home. Yeah, yeah. and make it, and make Fresh. it at home, and so tell us what happened from there, because yeah. that was just like a cool little turning yeah. point. Yeah, so, um. So we started talking about if I wanted to do pre-made meals for people and I said, you know, I don't really want to just like be in a kitchen all day because my passion is really teaching other people and yeah. sharing the gift of good food with other people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you do that by empowering them to cook and to yeah. know where their food comes from. And so then it was just like, ding, yeah. like, okay. <laughs> We are gonna start a meal kit delivery service where yeah. I bring all of the best ingredients to you mm -hmm. and I provide you with the instructions on how to cook them and voila. Voila. <laughs> it, what, what's so cool is that it's just like when you have the right vision or the right idea, it's like how fast you got into action because sometimes if you're not taking action, it's really hard. You're like yeah. paralyzed. You're yeah. like, you find all these excuses or things just don't happen or money is hard to come by. Yeah. And so that light bulb just hit and it yeah. was just like, whoa. But there was, the one thing that was like my favorite part of that experience together was was when we were started talking about just how we can like have it be for a much bigger yeah. vision. So I'd love for you yeah. to share that. Um, so for every meal kit that I sell, I also donate a dollar to Feeding America San Diego, which feeds mm -hmm. four people in San Diego. So that's, that's so huge. Cool. And just in the month of August, I was able to feed 800 people who wouldn't have gotten food otherwise. That's so, so cool. So that's amazing. It feels good every time I go to their distribution center mm -hmm. and it's just... You read those awesome. pictures that you have yeah. from there with the 800 meals. Yeah. I mean, feeding 800 people. And it's like, and what I love about that is it takes it from a business where every business has challenges. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine what it was like for Kat to, you know, get the customers and then imagine the the logistics of this you know for a lot of us we're building online businesses mm -hmm. which is a lot more streamlined yeah. this was so many things to orchestrate but it's like the vision you know you grabbed onto and then also yeah. it's like hey, if you're having a tough day it's like well you know we did feed 800 people right. yeah you know and but i think that that's also a really cool differentiator where you've got you know there's a couple other companies like this out there but it's to me what makes it so unique mm -hmm. is catherine and you know, I think eventually what's gonna be awesome is having you, you know, making the videos about the meals totally. and how to make them and yeah. and sharing that gift of cooking so you're getting in households and yeah. you know, have the cookbook and all that stuff that comes out and but it's like imagine you're eating Catherine's ridiculously awesome food. My I love the salmon. The oh, pesto yeah. Yeah. salmon <laughs> was like unbelievable. And but imagine like you're eating it and you're there with your significant other, maybe if you have kids, they're eating it too, and it's like Imagine like soon enough, like the recipe card and you flip it over and it's just a, like a testimony about yeah. the you know people that were able to eat because of the service. Totally. And that's just a big part of, you know, what we feel like as a life on fire is just when your business is, is a for purpose business helping others and that's yeah. just, so you nailed it on that and then I would love just to hear um, what happened from that point? Because yeah. you had a lot of roll up the sleeves yeah. and get into action. And <laughs> yeah. so tell us about like how, like the goal you set and then just mm -hmm. what transpired. Sure. So at that VIP day, um, we were kind of running some numbers and I remember you said, how soon can you get 40 people? And I very confidently was like, ah, oh, next week, I got it. And you're like, what? And so smart. one of the smart things I did when I started this food blog was I started establishing a mailing list. So I already had a mailing list of 1200 people mm -hmm. and so I knew that I could reach out to them right away yeah. and I was really confident that between um, Friends or people that used to come to my restaurant mm -hmm. that I could get 40 people so I 
right away got to work. I enlisted my brother in helping me build a, a sales page. Who's been a hero. I know. This. He's yeah, such like, a good guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got, you know, just a one page website up. Mm -hmm. I didn't have like a whole shebang going. It was just yep. one single page. And um, I sent out a series of emails. Just I read the book Launch by Jeff yeah. Walker and just tried to like follow his yeah. situation. And um, I'm, the first day I'm like, oh man, I got 11 people on day number one. Heck yeah. And then it was like day number two, I got six. And then it was like 14. And so I got to 40 and then I'm like, let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped there. Yeah, so then I got to 50. And then it's not like, like you have to prepare okay, it all already. I know, right? Yeah. yeah. I was just like, this is amazing. And so I got to 50 people. And then when I got to 50 people, I'm like, oh, now I need to like figure it out. And so that was a, that was a pretty big hit for me was like to have to figure it out. And I want to I want to pause there because thinking about how you took action like that, it's mm -hmm. like you didn't wait and build a big website right. and like do all this stuff. It's like you led with the profit producing activities. You yeah. proved it out first by getting the customers and we always say yeah. like build as you go. You right. know, don't don't create something and then spend three months building the infrastructure totally. and then you go to sell it and like oh crap, no yeah. one's buying. Yeah, yeah. It's like you went out you got the customers, yeah. you exceeded your goal, and it was key that you know you had a clear focus goal, mm -hmm. exceeded that, and then think of just how much momentum and, and in a sense, yeah. pressure. Absolutely. But now you mm -hmm. have a big reason to deliver. Yeah. You already have the customers. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so the first week I started gearing up, and I had ordered all the food, I had all the recipes done, mm -hmm. and I remember the very first order, I remember just looking at this tower of produce, and my dad had to come with me because I had to use his truck. And uh, like we needed all cars on deck because it yeah. was so much food. And I remember he looked at me and he goes, you over ordered. And I said, no, I didn't. I know I didn't. And he's like, there's no way you're going to go through this food. And I'm like, yes, there is. And he's like, how do you figure? There's only 50 people. And I'm like, no, but there's three recipes mm. in each box times two portions. So it's 50 times six. So I'm actually feeding 300 people. <laughs> And then that's when it was like, oh my God, what did I do? Uh, it's only 300 meals. Yeah, like in one day, no big deal. And so, of course, my main focus is like everything has to be fresh. So I have to do it all super last minute. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm not kidding you. We worked like 24 hours around the clock, like, you know, half asleep, like putting celery in bags. Like, they're going to love this celery. It's going to be so good. Um, and so the first day, I mean, we were, I was leaving the warehouse that I used to package up everything and mm -hmm. it was after midnight and we were all just brain dead. And I remember just feeling like, I don't know if I can do this next week, yeah. but I had to because I sold people a bundle of four meal kits. So yeah. I had it in for at least four weeks. Yeah. And it's really good that I did that actually, because each week got better and better and better. And I think that's a, a key thing is it's like the first time you do anything, yeah. it's always the hardest and it's like yeah. you know for someone that's doing a webinar it's mm -hmm. like i can't imagine doing this like tw twice a month right but it's like you know first time you did it it takes the longest yeah. and then i know you you know i'll hear in a bit about yeah. your streamlining but it's like you just got into action and did it and then yeah. so tell just describe again just how, how you think about the box just so you know the the two meals just describe that again just so everyone yeah. really gets like the concept what it of, is yeah yeah so um so that's a meal kit delivery mm -hmm. service. And so inside each meal kit, there's three different recipes mm -hmm. and each recipe feeds two people. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you and Megan cook dinner one night, then you pull out your one recipe and mm -hmm. you cook that and it's enough for both of you. Yeah. So basically I'm feeding you three nights a week. Yeah. Um, and so the recipes are, you can choose from different menus. So I mm -hmm. believe you like the paleo gluten-free option. Mm -hmm. Keep it nice and trim. You know, And then <laughs> slim it up a little bit. Next time you see me, as, as these episodes go, you're gonna see me shrinking. <laughs> towards the wedding, towards <laughs> <Yeah>. the wedding. <laughs> and, um, and then there's a chef's favorite menu, which is mm. like mac and cheese oh, and some more luxurious okay. items. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a vegetarian option, mm -hmm. of course, for our, our veggie lovers. And so um, each week my clients will choose their menu. They can switch mm -hmm. every week. So if you want to do paleo one week, chef favorites another week, that's totally fine. And um, then I package up all of the ingredients, put the recipes right in there, and then I ship it out to them once a week on Tuesdays. So it mm -hmm. literally arrives on their doorstep. And then this has actually been one of the coolest parts for me is mm -hmm. that I have an exclusive Facebook group. 
and I run a photo contest every week and seeing these people get so into cooking their meals so cool. and they're posting pictures of their kids cooking and you know they're trying to plate everything it's like really oh, endearing yeah when so Megan she loves cooking and I love eating <laughs> so it works out great but like it's so fun we're like you know she makes them like this looks amazing yeah and uh, and then but it's the you know making sure it's yeah. all kind of organized oh, and, yeah. you know yeah gotta so, win those competitions oh yeah, yeah. so people just post their pictures all week mm -hmm. and it's um, and they can ask questions or they can you know say hey I really like that salmon can we see that again or yeah um, but just getting to interact with these people on a really close basis mm -hmm. um, I'm hosting a, a tour for them at one of my favorite produce warehouses oh, tomorrow that's cool. So it's really cool. It's just a really close knit community who yeah. loves food and loves to cook and loves to eat. That's awesome. So how about as far as like sourcing? So yeah. uh, like organics. Totally. All yeah. That kind of stuff. So um, right now we're sourcing everything from San Diego mm -hmm. um, or and the surrounding areas. Yeah. So we've got a, some really great organic farms. So like Crow's Pass Farms upward towards like Temecula and oh, some Inland cool. Valley and stuff. Um, and it, we try and do organic as often as possible. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes it's hard to get like organic rice. You know, yeah. like, but <laughs> the veggies and stuff are organic. Yeah. Um, the meat is all natural, no antibiotics, no hormones, That's grass cool. fed, free range, all all the good stuff. So, um, so these you're you're not sparing any expense no. in these meals, yeah? They're no, and you know, part of it is, I used to always tell my line cooks in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Don't serve somebody something if you wouldn't eat it. Yeah. And that's the same way I feel about this. Like, I'm not going to give you some disgusting chicken <laughs> if I wouldn't eat it, yeah. you know? So I'm, I'm sharing the wealth for sure. And I think that's what's so, to me, what makes us unique is, mm -hmm. is your experience as a chef. Yeah. And your life experiences from the school to the number one restaurant, you know, in the world. And it's like the food that comes, it's so flavorful. I mean, it's like, it's crazy. And this is, this is the craziest thing is I abuse pepper on everything. So anytime someone cooks anything, any holiday, I offend everybody. I just, I just crank pepper all oh. over everything. I've even carried a pepper to go. Oh yeah. Just because Still like right a holster. Yep. <laughs> and so we're eating the salmon and Megan just and she always just is like she knows like yeah, salt the salt right and pepper there. right there yeah. and and uh, and I just start you know eating it and she's yeah. just like what <laughs> like no salt and pepper and yeah. I was just like well not with Catherine's Ooh, food like it's just hey. like I, I I don't I don't need to there it's such a flavor bomb awesome. like it's just an explosion like it's it's so cool I if you don't live near San Diego you might want to move here yeah for definitely just move it's yeah. yeah just move out this way it will be national at some point but yeah. it just like it's so freaking flavorful it's so good Thank you. so um so you got the 50 customers yeah. and just tell us about just like how you've refined the process and got better. Totally, yeah. So the cool thing, like I said, is it's a pretty close-knit community. And mm -hmm. so after the first week, I got a lot of feedback right away. Like, hey, we love everything. This would make it even better for me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want, I want to make your life easier. So yeah. I'm all yours. So, um, you know, the I think the first week it was like every single little ingredient was just in the box. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm color coding the recipes. So, and it's in its own bag. So mm -hmm. if you're making the ribeye, you're like, oh, I'm taking the yellow bag out now. Mm -hmm. And then it's all the ingredients already kind of assembled for you there. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that's actually been super helpful for me as far as my organization yeah. goes also. Um, we got bigger boxes. The first couple of weeks, these boxes were like busting. You at open the it and it just <laughs> popped out. <Yeah. laughs> like. um, it's just you know we're trying to reduce the packaging and, mm -hmm. and we're trying to be really environmentally friendly. And so um, we're using less plastic bags and trying okay. to just condense everything into more environmentally friendly, friendly packaging. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hosting recycling events every month so that people can save their ice packs and bring Dang. them to me. Yeah. It's a win-win. You know, yeah. Then I don't have to buy them all the time and yeah. we get a recycle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of different steps along the way. And like I said, the first week where I tried to do everything on one day, mm -hmm. it's like so not realistic. <laughs> like, yeah. I can't feed 300 people in one day by myself anywhere yeah. so this is no different so just really developing the systems and enlisting some good help to help yeah. me out you know friends come over free drinks if you package celery with me <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so just kind of refining it every yeah. week. and what what would you say has been just like the biggest challenge right yeah. now yeah 
Um, I think that the biggest challenge for sure right now is I'm renting space in a warehouse mm -hmm. and I don't have any long-term storage there. Okay. So it's great that they let me use their space, but the fact that every week I'm having to haul all of my ingredients to mm. this warehouse and then haul them all the way back is really tricky. Um, I'm cooking for 300 people. It's like yeah. a lot of ingredients and I have a Fiat. So it's, <laughs> it's hard. Um, yeah. So definitely looking for a, uh, a warehouse space of my own that I can mm -hmm. set up and kind of, I'm all spread out in my parents' house. Maybe they'll get it back at some point. Um, and then also, like I said, I didn't have mm -hmm. a website when we started. So yep. I have this epic Excel spreadsheet that keeps track of everything. It's yeah. not epic at all. It like might as well be a Word document. Yeah. Like it's so elementary, but yeah. um, there's no automation. So mm -hmm. I'm like literally emailing people every week, harassing them. Like, what menu do you want? You still haven't told me. What, hey, do you want a d delivery this week or not? Like, it's like, She does it with, with smiley faces all over. Oh yeah, all yeah. over like, hey. Speaking. Uh, so that's been pretty time consuming. Um, yeah. I think that it's actually been helpful because I've gotten a lot of one-on-one -on -one communication and, with yeah. people. So it has opened a really special door, mm -hmm. but long-term to grow the business, that's I'll not that. very realistic. Yeah. So. And, and so how about just as far as growth, like what's your, yeah. where would you like to take it? So, and, um, I've been thinking a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, I mean, it's not like you're working or anything. Right. Like yeah, yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah. I think that if I had my own warehouse space mm -hmm. and if I had a small staff, a regular staff, yeah. even if it was four people, yeah. um, I feel like we could do a hundred boxes a day. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So five days a week. So that's a lot more than I'm doing now. I'm doing yeah. 50 a week now, but the reality is we do all of the packaging in one day and we do all mm. of the assembly in one day. So it would be easy to just multiply it yeah um, especially if we had space for it mm -hmm. so yeah so that's kind of where i see it going 100 boxes a day a day it's a lot of people it's a lot of hungry and, people and so would that serve california and then what about like long long term so yeah long term i want to be in, on the doorsteps of new york i want to mm. go to missouri i want to go everywhere you know yeah. i want to feed people all over the freaking country <laughs> 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 um and that's my long-term goal mm -hmm. and Definitely, I like you know starting in San Diego. It's my mm -hmm. hometown. I've got a lot of support here, and there's a lot of hungry people here. Yeah. Um, but I don't see why this couldn't go national. Yeah, and what's cool is that there's you know there's a, a couple other companies that have mm -hmm. kind of laid that the the railroad tracks, in if you will. It's like yeah. that they are doing it. So we all know we know it's possible. It's right. like a hot market for this right yeah. now. Such a good service, and I just I, I just picture with the mission behind it mm -hmm. of feeding other people and then just with being unique having you you know like you are what makes this so unique is from personality to the recipes and you yeah. on camera showing them how to make it and and uh so it's just super exciting cool. i'm so fired up for you thank you and what i would love to do is just to talk about just some of the things like if you were to pull out just some of like what you've learned from yeah. the process oh, yeah. and just figure that for you watching you know what are some of those things like there's so many lessons in this uh, yeah it's so you know yeah <laughs> um so so many lessons mm -hmm. in fact i just constructed an email yesterday to some family members because uh it's been really stressful mm -hmm. and i've definitely had like the devil and the angel mm -hmm. the devil being like if you're working this much, why don't you just go to a restaurant? And the angel being like, this is so rewarding to do it for yourself and yeah. for others, to help others. Because I really feel like with this business, I'm providing a service to others. Mm -hmm. And so it feels so much more rewarding. Um, but the lesson would just mostly be to not give up and to yeah. not let the fear stop you. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, after that first week, I was like, you can handle Jamaica anything. looks yeah. awesome. Like I'm ready to hide. Yeah. And then I had to really the second week I had to be like, you need to get out from under the box and yeah. like get your butt in gear. Um, and then it's just been interesting to see how I've evolved with the business. Like, you know, the last um, box that I had to assemble the last week, 
I went from being like, oh gosh, today's gonna be a long day to we're gonna try and get this done in four hours. Like yeah. everyone go, you know, like yeah. I have to be my own cheerleader and I have to be my friends' cheerleaders. Yeah. And just it's a mindset shift that's been really helpful for me to be to make it a game for myself. Yeah. Like how fast can we do this? You know, how how awesome can we do this? Can we not have one person email us a question? Like, can we explain yeah. it that good enough? Um and so, yeah, just being persistent, not giving up. I mean, it all sounds cliche, but it's like so true because yeah. they're just in one month. I can't tell you how many times I was like, well, yeah, yeah. this is over yeah. now. <laughs> and it, what's crazy, I mean, you just figure for, for all entrepreneurs that we constantly have the devil yeah. and the angel in those thoughts and the devil's always trying to rob you always. of your dreams. Felicia. Ah, oh, Felicia. We, <laughs> we call the devil Felicia in our, in our world with life on fire. But it just, it, it is a constant battle. And yeah. I think having that awareness over um, in those thoughts and mm-hmm. being able to, um, you know, just listen to the angel. But yeah. I think it's also like what you said about because this feels so good for you because you're truly helping yeah. people and you're feeding you know, homeless people. It's right. like, those are the things that keep you going. Absolutely. And I just feel like for any business, it's like when you have that component, that's, that's the thing that drives you through the challenges and the challenges that look like mountains, like they've reduced down to like yep. eh, little yeah. mini, yeah, little hills, little hills yeah. rolling yeah. hills. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like when you attach it to that, it just, everything changes. Yeah. And, um, and the crazy thing is like the bigger this thing grows, the more, you know, the bigger the challenges that come, right. which is true for anyone that's yeah. an entrepreneur. And that it just, it's like getting yourself to have like the joy, kind of like when you yeah. turn that corner where mm-hmm. it's like, wow, I've got to prep all this food. Let's make it a game of suit in four hours. Yeah. And it's getting it to where it's fun going through the, the work, you know, yeah. and it's like, it's no life on fire when you're working so hard and you're miserable. Yeah, it's right. like, well, how do we make it fun? How do we gamify it yeah. for your team? Yeah. You're already exuding like leadership to the folks that are helping you. Yeah. And you know, when you, you know, have real employees, basically, yeah, you'll yeah. be able to make it fun and like right. have a cool Contest, culture and yeah. contests. And yeah, I know. have um, a big sign at home for, that I got from one of your, one of like the very first life on fire coaching calls when you're yeah. talking about the Navy SEAL thing. Oh yeah. yeah. It's like embrace the suck. Oh yeah. And I just like remind myself of that. Like it's yeah. going to suck right now, but it's going to be awesome after. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like you, that's, that's the whole thing is like, you get to do this. Yeah, like yeah. the context of that was mm-hmm. like the, the Navy SEAL training and it was the most butt kicking I've ever had yeah. in my life. Like I was wanting to throw up. I, I <laughs> thought my muscles were tearing Yeah. and they're getting us to say these mantras in our yeah. heads that, you know, we got this easy day or mm-hmm. I got this easy day. And like, we're constantly shouting out these positive affirmations and, you know, knowing that and visualizing us at the other, at the other side of it, exactly. you know, so you staying focused on the other end of it. And it's like, whether it's a Navy SEAL or, or an entrepreneur, like it's no different. Like yeah. we all have to embrace the suck and mm-hmm. have joy through the process and be so attached to that end vision where it's like, there's going to be hundreds of thousands of people that are going to eat because of totally. this mission and this movement. So I think it's awesome. I think there's awesome. one thing, one question that I haven't asked that oh. I have to, oh my. I'd be doing you a disservice if I did not <laughs> ask, ask this. And it's Catherine's favorite recipe, and I'd love to know what it is. Uh, On the inside of her arm, she uh, has it just in case. Just in case. So just can we get a so the mulligatani soup recipe? Uh, we may need to blur this out. Uh, I know it's a, it's a secret. Yeah, this it's like is like the a Seinfeld episode. Super, yeah. <laughs> where the mulligatani soup is in the drawer. Yeah. Elaine found it. Uh, no soup for you. Yeah. Um, this is this is not a recipe. Oh, it's not, yeah. it's not a recipe. <laughs> I thought it was mulligatawny soup this I know whole time. I wanted it to be. It's, it's not. It's a. Uh, it's a poem. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm. Uh, Is it a poem about a recipe? It's not. It's not. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's very disappointing. I know. Um, I'm Palestinian, and it's a poem about being Palestinian. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. And so, all right, well, you know, I guess we kind of dodge the favorite recipe thing. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say is your absolute favorite? If you had to pick one, which yeah. I, you probably have a million, but like, what's your favorite? My favorite thing to eat or to cook? Let's go one of each. Okay. All right. Um, my favorite thing to cook mm-hmm. is probably duck. Really? Yeah. Um, specifically like duck confit, okay. which means that it's cooked in its own fat. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty delicious. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, that's definitely my favorite thing to cook. Mm -hmm. Very classic French, reminds yeah. me of Paris. Um, and my favorite thing to eat is probably like a ribeye. Actually, yeah? I'm with you. Yeah, I'm like Team a ribeye. steak girl. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the, um, what was the seasoning on the ribeye that we got in the box? Because um, it's like, I normally do like olive oil and I don't know, yeah, a bunch it of was, random stuff. I think the it was, seasoning was like. Yeah, I think it was probably like fresh herbs and garlic and onion powder. Yeah. Yeah, that was probably it. Yeah, I think, was there thyme up in there? Oh yeah, definitely something? thyme with yeah, the Yeah, I've never done yeah. thyme on a steak. Oh yeah. So good. Well, cool. Before we wrap up, what I'd love to do too is just, I would love for you to share how folks can, yeah. I, this to me is such a cool journey to see this unfolding. And, you know, I, I feel like we're going to look back at this and be like, wow, wasn't that crazy? Yeah. You know, when you were in your parents' house yeah. and, um, you know, the humble beginnings. And yeah. I think for folks that want to kind of uh, just to see this ride unfold yeah. and also maybe catch recipes. So if you're totally. not, if you don't live in San Diego, um, or California, because mm -hmm. she delivers up north a bit. Um, how can they stay in touch and just yeah, kind of cheer you on and just see what's going on and catch some of these recipes? Absolutely. So I have um, just all sorts of recipes mm -hmm. and cooking videos on www.savorymadesimple.com. And then if they want to learn more specifically about this, the actual meal kits, then you can go to eat.savorymadesimple.com. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And uh, so what I would say is if you're in the San Diego area, um, is it limited availability? Or as far it as the is, next, it's kind of still know, a little exclusive. Reach but out to me and we'll see what we can do. Yeah. So yeah, there's only the 50 people, the private inside circle yeah. before she gets the space. <laughs> and it's so good. You don't want to not, you, once you're on the inside circle, you don't yeah, want to leave. Wanna leave yeah. So cool. Well, I would go check out savorymadesimple.com, hop on the mailing list, yep. catch some of these amazing recipes no matter where you live, and then definitely See if you can, you know, get one of these boxes. <laughs> the bundle is so good. So, well, thank you for everything. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you rock. And we'll thank see you guys you. very soon. Awesome. Cheers. I'm here to help you set your life on fire.